All right, so let's look at the very final part of the organic chemistry exam past questions and answer. All right, so part seven, the very final one. Already we've discussed part one, two, three, four, five, six in our previous lesson. So if you missed out the other parts, please do well to check the channel, all right, for the previous parts. Also, if you can't see these questions clearly, do well to go to your settings and increase the video quality so you can see the questions clearer, all right? So let's get to question seven. Question seven AI says, the number of pi bonds in hexa 135 triene is... So let's let's get let's get the structure for hexa one three five triene. All right. Now, when we say a hex, a hex has to do with six carbon atoms. So I'm having one, two, three, four, five, six. So this six gives you a hex. Now you have hexa one three five. If I should label this carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, and carbon six. So if I have 135, it means to carbon 1, I will attach a double bond. To carbon 3, I will attach a double bond. To carbon 5, I will attach a double bond, just like this, right? And the others will now be single bonds, so I have this. Now, in the question, we are asked to find the number of pi bonds. And we know that pi bonds only exist in double and triple bonds. And for every double bond, you have one pi bond. So in essence, I can just, from here, I can get my final answer because I know that in balancing this one here, I'll just have to add single bonds, which do not have pi bonds. So I won't bother balancing this whole structure. But if I was if I was asked to find the number of sigma bonds, then I must balance everything. But since it's just pi bonds, I don't have to stress. I'll come here. This double bond will have one pi bond. This other double bond will have one pi bond. And this one will have one pi bond. The other ones will give you sigma. So in totality, I have 1 plus 1 plus 1. That's 3 pi bonds. So this becomes 3 pi bonds. The answer here is 3. That's your answer. All right, let's come to the second part here. AII says, how many sigma bonds are there in octane? An oct has to do with 8 carbon atom alkane because an octane. So I'll form an 8 carbon atom alkane. Um, so I'm having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's balance this. Since, since, since I have an alkane, it will be single bond throughout. All right? Single bond throughout. Single bond throughout. Single bond. H. 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 Hydrogen. Hydrogen. So I'll just go ahead and add hydrogen to each of these. All right? Now, observe that in the first one, I did not balance everything because they asked me for pi bond. And since single bonds do not have pi bonds, I did not bother. But this one here, I'm being asked for sigma bonds. And single bonds do have sigma bonds. So I must complete the structure before I do my count. All right, so for me to get the number of sigma bonds here, I just simply have to count the number of single bonds. For each single bond, I get one sigma bond. So in totality, how many, sing how many single bonds do I have here? I have one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. So in S, I have 25 sigma bonds. All right, so the answer there is 25, which is the third option here, 25. Okay, next up. III says the reaction this is now what you have is actually called an heterolytic bond cleavage or heterolysis. All right, it's in my full course on my website. All right, so you can check my website www.journalmoney.com forward slash courses. Right, get the organic chemistry course and you see the class on um, bond cleavage. Right, IV4 says electron deficient reagents are called dash. All right, electron deficient reagents are called dash. The answer there is the answer there is electrophiles. All right, so please take note that electron deficient reagents are called electrophiles. That's your answer. All right, next up there, V says valence electrons involved in covalent bond formation are called they are called bonding electrons. All right, the answer there is the third option, they are called bonding electrons. So that's your answer. All right, so with this, we're done with the A part. Let's look at the B part. 
The B part says, give the major product of the following reaction. So let's look at the B part. B part there. Uh, let's get the reaction there. We have this as CH3, C, double bonded to CH2. Um, this is up here to CH3. All right. So if this man here combines with HCl, combine this man with hydrochloric acid there, what the major product form? Now, the major product formed in this case would be, by the way, this compound here, this compound here is 2-methyl, this is 2-methyl propene. Alright? So if 2-methyl propene combines with hydrochloric acid, what do you have? Um, your final answer will be this. So you'd have 1, 2, and 3. This would be CH3. Methyl will still be up here. CH3. You have, let's add the H3 here, CH3. Then here, you now have the chlorine here. So this is what the major product would be. What you have here is called 2-chloro, 2-chloro, 2-methyl, propane. All right. So this would be your major product, right? So that's what you notice, okay? Now the idea is this. When it's combined here, the halogen here would come to this one here, the carbon here, all right? And the double bond becomes a single bond. So it comes down this way here, and that's why you have 2-chloro-2-methyl-propane as your answer. All right, there's another part there for the B. What if this same reagent is being combined with H2O, that's water, or sulfuric acid? What do you have? So the same thing there. Um, CH3 combined with carbon. Upward here, CH3. Double bonded to CH2. Right, and we said this is called 2-methyl. 2 methyl propene so 2 methyl propene would combine with water that's h2o or h2so4 tetraoxysulfate 6 acid all right if this to combine here now it will form an alcohol right in this case an alcohol be formed You'd have this um, CH3, C, upward here, CH3, you have here CH3, down here you have an OH. Now this compound here is called 2-methyl, right, this is 2-methyl propane 2-ol. Or 2 methyl 2 propanol, whichever one that's your answer. All right, so see the difference there. If if um, a propane combines with hydrochloric acid, you have that a propane will be formed, as in this form here. While if it combines with either water or tetraoxysulfate 6 acid, you have that an, an, that an alcohol is being formed. All right, the same concept, just that here you have a halogen, while here you have an OH, which gives you an alcohol right so that's how this is done all right one last question there all right one final part says give an equation for the formation of nitrobenzene from cyclohexane all right so i'm moving from cyclohexane so i'm moving from cyclohexane to nitrobenzene right so how do we move from cyclohexane to nitrobenzene First things first, let's get our cyclohexane structure. Hex is six carbon, so I'm having... First things first, let's get the cyclohexane structure. Um, I would have something that looks like this. So cyclohexane, a hex is six carbon atoms. So let's get my cyclohexane. All right, so this is my cyclohexane. 
combine this here. Now, how do we get benzene or perhaps nitrobenzene from cyclohexane? The first thing that you have to do there is that you have to combine your cyclohexane. You have to combine it with platinum or palladium. All right. So combine it with either PD. This is called palladium or PT. PT is called platinum. So if I react cyclohexane with either platinum or palladium, it will give you a benzene ring. So I'll get my benzene. I'll get my benzene here. Okay, let's get the benzene. All right, so I'll get my benzene uh, this way. All right. Now, if I want to get, remember that we have to find nitrobenzene. To get nitrobenzene means that I have to combine benzene with um, hydrogen trioxide nitrates. All right. To get um, nitrobenzene, we we'll combine this with hydrogen trioxide nitrates. This, or perhaps with sulfuric acid H2SO4. So if I combine this benzene with any of these reagents, I will now get my nitrobenzene. And that will now be this. So nitrobenzene is still the same thing as benzene, but then with a with an NO2 substituent or attachment. Um, this, this. All right. So this is my benzene. I'll come up here. And I'll attach NO2 here. So NO2. This now gives you your nitrobenzene. So I can come here and name this compound nitro benzene. What I have here is a benzene. Then what I have here is actually a cyclohexane. All right, so I think this is your last question. Yep, so this is the final part of the seven-part series of the Organic Chemistry exam question and solution for 2023, right? To get my complete Organic Chemistry course, where you learn everything about different homologous series in Organic Chemistry, including the alkanes, the alkenes, the alkynes, the alcohols, the ether, the esters, the amine, the amines, um, their nomenclature, the nomenclature, their preparations, their reactions, and everything about them, simply visit my website, www.jonahimane.com forward slash courses, and then look for the organic chemistry course, all right? It's a detailed course on all the homologous series, okay? All right, so if you, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button, all right? So just smash that like button, leave a comment, tell us if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if it's your first time. Please do well to subscribe to this channel. And finally, please share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in the next class.